The flight engineer has been killed. Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Let's get the show on the road. There was a question over whether or not we should review the horror at 37,000 feet because while it's not great and does have some laughable moments... It's a Selsen motor, not a human female. I'll pull it. It's nowhere near as bad as our usual fare. Wish I could find something funny in all this. What makes it funny is actually its connections. For starters... <laughs> yes, William Shatner is having a horror at 37,000 feet just 10 years after he had a nightmare at 20,000 feet. Peculiar. Ugly illusion. There's something on the wing! That's a little nasty, isn't it, dear? Actually, there's something in the hold. And for the record, I think they missed a trick by not calling this. There's something in the hold. You really don't know what's down in that hole, do you? Let's backtrack. This flight has been specially commissioned by wealthy jerk Alan O'Neill to transport... The remains of an old abbey. It's been my wife's family for centuries. ...which he's taking from the UK to the US. But he doesn't know that something has come along with it, sending a chill through the plane as it is loaded. <laughs> freezing the windows of the cockpit and blowing up stewardess's skirts. What a mischievous demon. Because this isn't a proper flight, there's only a handful of passengers, plus two stewardesses. Hey, lay off that, will you? You know how I hate flying. <sighs> Just wait till you get to the end of the movie. But shortly after takeoff... We're caught in a wind like none there ever was. So, this is like an aerial horror express, or exorcist at 37,000 feet. Ori igne sancti spiritus. But to be honest, what most people watching today are going to be thinking of is Airplane. It's got the little girl. My little girl's just a teeny bit nervous. The guitar. You know, this sounds a little off. Naturally. And Chuck Connors playing the pilot was the Sarge in Airplane 2. It can happen, but it has. Shatner, of course, was also in Airplane 2. Here displaying his finest dramatic pause acting. Do you remember what you said when... when you fainted? As he plays a priest who has lost his faith. And I love Bill Shatner, but it's hard to envisage Captain Kirk as a priest. <laughs> I was just thinking I might become a doctor. Until you find out why he might no longer be a priest. And they have such power over women. It's that uh, paternal thing. Except doctors are free to use it. The fuss people made when I hit on my parishioners. In the hold, things have escalated. Yikes. I would not stick around. Party. Is he okay? Jim. He's dead. He's dead, Jim. How will they stop the demon? That'll hold it. The first half of the film does a good job of building the menace without us ever actually seeing anything. But, as with a lot of TV movies, it does struggle when it wants to visualise the threat. <gasps> what is it? Another good title, by the way. There's something under the carpet. I do also feel that most of the thought went into the setup, not how to resolve it. He doesn't matter. We have to find out what it wants. The demon wants O'Neill's wife, but obviously they're not going to sacrifice the poor woman, so... Perhaps we could offer it this. We're assuming this is a short-sighted demon. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't realise you were going to dress it up. Oh. 
can't believe that didn't work. In the end, it feels as if Shatner's priest drunkenly rambles his way through various suggestions. A fire, Mrs. Pinder, is that it? Before stumbling into a conclusion that doesn't really pay off on the moral conundrum it set up. One life against how many? And leaves questions unanswered, particularly concerning Mrs. Pinder, whose main motive seems to be explicating the plot for everyone else. Inside the altar at Grove Abbey was a druid sacrificial stone. That said, this has a solid cast, including Buddy Ebsen. Don't you laugh at me. And Paul Winfield. The only magic I know is that man can resist gravity and fly at 37,000 feet. A solid idea that I'm now calling spooks on a plane. Are you saying it came from inside the plane? And a solid structure that develops at a well-paced rate right up until the final act when someone said, Faithless Priest, has anyone seen the Poseidon adventure? Closer to heaven, the more discordant. But as an example of 70s TV movies at their best, give it a watch. You fool. You've given them hope for nothing. Thanks for watching. If you like budget horror, then check out my books. There's a link in the description below. What are your favourite non-Star Trek performances from the legendary William Shatner? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah!